Hi! This time I wanted to talk about how the Game Master, Dungeon Master, Referee, etc. should learn to let go of different non-player characters. There are some videos that talk about the problems that arise with the Game Master player character, that is when a Game Master has like his or her favorite non-player character that is basically a player character, they make sure that that non-player character appears in every scene, that character is going to rescue everyone in the party by doing this or that, so the Game Master falls into this problem of living his fantasy, using the other characters as vehicles or resources to showcase how great his personal character is at doing this or that, so it's quite egocentric terrible for a, an adventure and even more terrible for an entire campaign so we're not talking about that situation but there are some cases when the game master actually falls in love with a group of non-player characters they could be unrelated or unconnected but he loves using those non-player characters and he tries to introduce them in every scene into every situation and that has potentially a worse effect now you have various game master player characters participating. The main difference between a player character and a non-player character, just to make things clear, is that the player characters are the focus of the adventure. The, everyone participating in the session is mostly experiencing the game world through the adventures of the player characters. The non-player characters fall into the background. Sometimes they disappear. Oftentimes, they are not as capable as the player characters. And in a lot of cases, the non-player characters are in direct opposition to the player characters. But, like I said, sometimes the Game Master falls in love in, with a, a few of them, or a lot of them, and he wants to insert them into every scene. This robs the game of its reality, of its believability. As the player characters interact with the game world, many things are going to be changing. Whether it be a scenario-based campaign or a sandbox, many things are going to be happening in the background. If the player characters do something that takes them away from a particular group of non-player characters, take them out of the scene. Do not uh, try to force them into the next scene or the next adventure site. Only if it's a mysterious non-player character that is vital and has some sort of way of moving through the stage or through the rather through the entire scenario or the sandbox, perhaps for some reason that non-player character is connected to the objectives of the player characters, maybe he's actually working alongside them or against them in tandem, then you could stumble upon that non-player character various times. But everyone else their fate, their destiny, should be left according to the logic of what is, what is happening in the game world. Maybe because of the actions of the player characters, a war happens. So those non-player characters could end up dying in that war. Or maybe they actually profit from that war. So you need to take that into account, have them doing, doing their own thing, carrying out with their own agendas, on the side, do not introduce them. If the player characters do something or take a route or course of events that simply make it impossible for them to interact with those non-player characters, let it be so. Do not fall in love with those non-player characters. Let them fall off stage. let them disappear on the background. Maybe they will appear in some other session, who knows? Maybe with a different group of adventurers, a different campaign altogether, or, or if you're running one-shots, it's a different group altogether, potentially. I think this could be a problem in those settings with famous non-player characters or iconic non-player characters. All of those intellectual properties related, it could be Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Star Trek, it can be quite, how would you say, seducing, enticing to use those famous characters from the different intellectual properties and have them appearing all the time and as a game master playing as those player characters, portraying them, 
have them participating in battles using different ta tactics and strategies that showcase their powers, their resources, their intelligence, all of that, their strength. Do not let yourself be seduced as a game master. The player characters are the stars of the show. Every non-player character out there should fulfill a purpose. And once that purpose is fulfilled, they should no longer be in the focus, in the spotlight with the player characters. There could be some role-playing games with particular moments, particularly, spe specifically, those um, Japanese role-playing games where you have like interlude scenes, where you have this moment between a non-player character talking with a non-player character, setting the stage like a typical anime or manga or even a video game. I think that's permissible, but beyond that, the focus should be on the player characters and the non-player characters should be put to the side. Even if it doesn't have to do with a famous intellectual property, or at least not on the movie, comic book, etc. Well, that, that is arguable. There, there could be some exceptions, but even in Dungeons and Dragons, in the different campaign settings, you have uh, people like uh, Mordenkainen or Dritz Dourden, uh, Elminster. Even though those characters are very cool to, to roleplay, only if they are relevant for a particular adventure or scene, only then should you employ them. Don't try to force them into situations. It's going to be incredibly artificial, the potentially immersion breaking, even potentially immersion breaking, because the players are going to think, oh, there he goes again. He's going to place Dritz in this part because he wants to kill some orcs with Wengrivar and using his scimitars and it's going to feel predictable, artificial, it, it could potentially ruin the experience. So I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. Let me know your own thoughts on this in the comment section below. Uh, thank you for watching my videos as always. Thank you for your likes and your comments. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to, for, to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you and see you later.